Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Zero number uh, Z955. This is a left hand cam lift hinge. This is a Z955, which means it's a cam lift hinge. And this is left hand. Okay. These are simply handed because the, um, well, obviously where the pin resides is going to need to be the the um, the frame portion, and you certainly can't turn it over, so it makes that aspect of this handed, okay? And therefore, you also are going to have the other piece without the pin, and of course, that just can't be turned over. Uh, that pin is what hands the door, obviously. So what happens here is in the closed position, You'll certainly see that the top of both leaves are flush, and when you open the door to 90 degree, let's just take it to 180 degree to exaggerate it, you can see how the uh, door portion is now substantially higher. The purpose of this cam lifting action, of this lifting action, is that simply this. The door is constantly being pulled down to the ground. Because of the cam lift profile of this hinge with these spiral type cuts, that weight is always forcing the door to close and seal tight against the seal of the that's been applied to the frame. The point of that is, um, with the door being positively pushed against the seal, the concept is, is that you'll get better coverage. So you're going to see cam lift hinges in instances where you, uh, where your application calls for the best possible seal against the sealing material, the seal material. Um, but that, and those those applications are acoustical uh, applications. Um, they indicate. Uh, when you have EMI, RFI, and sound insulating doors utilizing acoustical seals uh, is where you're going to use cam lift hinges. You can certainly use cam lift hinges um, in a standard door opening. Um, but because the need to seal the door um, is secondary probably to the standard operation of the door. If you're dealing with an acoustically rated opening, you probably know that you're dealing with a with a special assembly. Therefore, special handling rules would apply, I, I suppose, to the user. But in a standard application, you know, I, I, you know that door is going to have a tendency to want to close. <laughs> Certainly, the weight of the weight of the door. Uh, so be mindful of that. It's probably going to be only used in in, in, in specialty applications. This is. Um, 1020 stainless steel precision investment cast. 630 is the finish. That means brushed finish over solid stainless. This is four and a half by four and a half. It's really important to know the size of the hinge is four and a half by four and a half in that it is four and a half tall. The height is the first dimension. That's the point of this. The height is the first dimension and the width is the second dimension. Um, it's important to know that because you may be dealing with a hinge that is not square. Let's take a look and see if any other, if uh, if a five by four and a half, for instance, is manufactured. Indeed, it is. Um, so you can do a five by four and a half, and we'll look at that catalog cut in a moment. So the important part is to know the height is the first dimension. That's what you're going to prep the door for, um, door and frame for, for the height of that hinge. The other thing you have to know about the prepping is the leaf thickness, and this is 134 thousandths thick. My, spot on. My, cal my caliper tells me 0.134. Spot on. Okay. Let's look at the balance of the extended description information that is down below. Definitely handed. You'll 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 need to order the proper hand. There is a handing chart that shows the hand of this. Should you need that uh, to to review that, if the hand that you see down below, the degree of the swing of that door is not what you need, change the hand. It's it'll it'll be a right hand, obviously, if that's not the the hand you need. And if you are doing a reverse bevel, then you'll order it correctly. But there's really only two ways these are manufactured. 
meaning a left hand uh, hinge would be the same as a right hand reverse hinge is, is what I'm driving at. Uh, they are for doors when used in uh, a pair and a half rated for 200 pound applications. 180 degree opening is going to give you a 3 16ths of an inch lift. That requirement or, or that uh, that fact of this hinge is going to require that you have a 3 16ths of an inch minimum gap from the underside of the header to the top of the door. That's atypical which means you're going to have to manufacture the door and frame for this because standard convention would give you an eighth of an inch at the top. So be mindful to um, make your adjustment and you're probably simply going to adjust the location of the hinges on the door by a sixteenth of an inch. You will decrease that dimension. So if your standard, um, you know, if it was a Seiko, well, that's a bad example, uh, a sister company of zero would be Steelcraft. If the top of the door to the top of their first hinge was to be seven and three eighths, uh, you would make that, of course, seven and five sixteenths. That will drop that down lower. Uh, and you'll have to compensate for that. Uh, so be mindful. Um, but then uh, be mindful of your overall length when you're dropping that door. Uh, when you're when you're dropping that door down, you're probably going to need to make the net height of that door a little bit smaller um, because you're gap at the top is large, a sixteenth larger. You can leave your gap at the bottom a sixteenth smaller if you like, or you can just trim it so that it is a typical whatever you want. Five eighths, three quarter for hollow metal. The point of the matter is it will take a custom setup um, to make this work. And if your door is thicker than inch and three quarter, you'll need a quarter inch margin. Screws uh, for this series of hinge, uh, the screws must be engaged in no less than 0.35 inch thick steel reinforcement. So because of the way that the door is going to hang uh, and how the hinge is going to handle the weight, a lot of that is going to be uh, because of its lifting up. A lot of there will be additional stress placed on the hinge plate. The hinge reinforcement will not only need to be substantially thicker, but the attachment of that to the frame will be, need to be substantially compensated as well. Um, more welding. For use with uh, EMI, RFI, and sound insulating doors utilizing acoustical seals, cam action greatly improves the sealing characteristics along the perimeter of the door, lifting and lowering the door with the swing. Cam lift hinges will not bind uh, in, in a typical door and has been tested with Zero Sister Company's LCN's uh, 4041 standard closer. Now let's pause this video and take a look at the extended description and the links therein. Now let's take a look at the item that we're looking at here. Here is the profile. Here's the hand that we discussed, okay? And in um, in league with looking at that hand, let's take a look at the handing chart. That is the entire handing chart that we have. That's just an old chart that I made literally 30 years ago. Um, does the job reasonably well. Here is a schematic of what the hinge looks like. We've, we've gone over the dimensional properties. Now, product brochure, and this is the important part in the sense of understanding the hinge in terms of what's available. Now, they can get some ridiculous door weights on these doors. I have this Z9500 is a preposterously large hinge in its, um, in its thickness. Um, you know, it's, <laughs> it's one heck of a hinge. Um... You know, when you're dealing with a hinge that is basically a quarter inch thick, which is almost double the thickness of this standard hinge that we've looked at. Okay, really large barrel assembly here. So mortise type cam hinges for use with the EMI, RFI, and sound insulating doors. We've, we've covered that. The cam action greatly improves the sealing characteristics along the door perimeter, lifting and lowering the door with the swing. The cam lift hinge is handed. They won't bind door closers. Door closers will have a little elbow on the a little ball joint more like on the shoe generally or a way for the arm to basically compensate for what is in effect 1 16th maybe 1 8th of an inch of additional vertical movement that it would not otherwise be normally expecting um, it, but it's been tested with the LCN 4041 to be found compatible they say that they're sold in pairs. Um, you know, we can buy them as each. That's how they're priced and sold. 
They're not sold per pair. Here's our Z955 down here in the corner. Looking back at our chart, 955, 953, 950, and 9500. So 955, 200, 300, 500, 900 pounds. So there's your 200 pound rated door is what we're dealing with. 300 pound here, Z953. Your 500 and your 900 pound rated hinges here. I had a client who ordered, who, who purchased some of the Z9500 hinges on a online flea market for like $30 a hinge and was building a uh, sound studio, you know, an amateur sound studio. And uh, just, you know, very occasionally you, you stumble into a great deal like that. Now keep in mind, it's going to be a five inch hinge tall <clears throat> when you're dealing with these two greater weight capacities. Um, actually, all three of them, forgive me, you're going to be at five inch tall whenever you leave the 955. Okay. The height of the hinge is directly related to the hinge's ability to handle the load of what it's being asked to do. Um, I, I understand that the hinge's ability to carry the load goes up by about 20 some percent uh, when you go that extra half of an inch. So if you have a, if you have a door that's heavier and this, this goes outside, outside of having a cam lift hinge, but this would also uh, apply to any door, a standard door that's simply heavier, or in general, one that's wider than three foot. It's industry best practice to go with a five inch tall hinge. And frankly, you should. Um, that's just the proper way to go. I've had people insist on ordering, you know, 16th of an inch lead line doors on knockdown drywall frames and using typical four and a half, four and a half, you know, butt hinges. And after we've, you know, discussed you, you need pivots or you need a bigger hinge or you need a welded frame, the client calls and says, why doesn't this door latch? Well, it's now a trapezoid uh, because <laughs> it's not in the frame normally and the hinge really isn't rated for the weight. Uh, don't know what they did about that. Um, they said they would fix it, and that was where that conversation ended, um, unfortunately. putting The important part is that you make your client aware of, here is best practice for, here is, here is industry best practice for your weight, your width, um, and uh, that will derive not only a height of the hinge, but of course uh, a thickness of a hinge as well. That hinge that's rated for 300 pounds, that's going to be 180 thousandths. That would be considered a heavyweight hinge. So that's a five by four and a half heavyweight, 180. That'll be standard for your door manufacturer. But again, you need to make that allowance for the head gap. And then, of course, your really epically heavy hinges here. Okay. Uh, the, show, uh, the fasteners are listed here as well, should those need to be purchased separately. 1224 by three quarter UC for undercut. That's here, that feature right here. That, that's what UC stands for. You see how this is flat head and goes all the way through. This is undercut. The reason that you have undercut is because the leaf thickness at 134 thousandths is too thin to get the entire head of the screw flush. But in that heavyweight hinge, that 180, you'll use this. And that 0.25 hinge here, the 950 and the 9500 will take the standard. And then you, of course, have wood screws that are available as well specifications of the steel as we had talked about earlier. They do have standard hinges as well. Um, you can buy zero branded, you know, four and a half, four and a half primed and, you know, dull chrome hinges. Um, I suppose you might do that if you wanted to source your hinges all from a single source. Um, I don't think of zero as hinges. I do know of them for cam lift hinges, but I don't think of them for standard hinges. Um, The other link that's on this page was the handing chart, which we've covered. Now, let's wrap up this video. Now, a very nice and attractive hinge, there's no doubt. The fit and finish looks very nice. Speaking of those fasteners, um, I, I, I don't, I wish it wasn't stamped L on the hinge leaf, I can see how that's a benefit. You know, they're gonna to go to the job site, people are gonna hang doors and the doors are gonna fall immediately. I get that when they're assembling them in the factory, I'm sure that they 
the factory, uh, whomever uh, might uh, might might like to know that this is a L hinge, an L leaf. I don't see why we couldn't stamp that on the back. Um, you know, I don't really have a problem with the zero logo. I don't want corporate advertising on my hardware when it can be helped. I think that zero could be a bit smaller. Um, Stanley does a good job. Their logo is 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 relatively small, but there are others like Cal Royal who have had a uh, an ever evolving logo, and it just doesn't need to be the size of you know a dinner plate. Um, speaking of the screws, machine screws and wood screws, you've got that undercut head there, as you can see right there. These screws, of course, ought to be stainless. The machine screws are definitely not stainless. I would say the wood screws are stainless because they're only marginal. They're not magnetic at all. I would expect a little bit of magnetism. But those those uh, those machine screws are anything but stainless. It's just the bottom line there. Okay, Definitely not stainless. Um, other than factory error, I cannot tell you why those screws are not stainless. Um, if you are using this in an environment where it all being stainless is important, like in isolating uh, perhaps a room in a hospital where they might be running a CAT scan machine or something like that, um, you might need to definitely have non-ferrous base components. Be sure to indicate in the comment field um, if those machine screws being stainless are utterly, uh, if that is a mission critical sort of requirement. I will certainly be bringing that up to the factory. Um, now, finally, there is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Zero products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the full product catalog. I am partial to Zero in the sense that the lineage of the engineering that went into the product line initially uh, is, was at that time at least very unique, well thought out, incredibly well thought out uh, by someone who really, or by people who really have the ability to solve problems that they're not necessarily aware of uh, by increasing surface area on their insert material. Uh, so a trip through their catalog would be time well spent. Uh, they have unique solutions to sealing uh, problems and you will find solutions there that you won't from other people, that's to be sure. Any questions on the Z955 cam lift hinge or any other Zero product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.